Between 1861 and 1865, some 2.8 million men fought in the Civil War. Most of these men were citizen soldiers, volunteers. Before the war, they held occupations like farmers, carpenters, blacksmiths, and common laborers. If they survived the war, they went back to those occupations after the hostilities closed. There was, however, a small cadre of officers, both in the Union and Confederacy, that were professionally military trained. And the school that these soldiers went to primarily was West Point and the Hudson River in New York. Founded in 1802, at the outbreak of the Civil War, this school had about 1,800 alumnus. And the living graduates participated both North and South at all levels of command. About two-thirds of the entire Army Officer Corps prior to the Civil War were graduates of West Point. Now West Point wasn't the only school that a young man could seek a military education in this country before the war. There were schools like Norwich in Vermont, VMI in Lexington, Virginia, and the Citadel in South Carolina. But the school that produced the most officers would be West Point. On April 12, 1861, the fate of the nation changed forever. When the Confederate commander at Charleston Harbor, a West Point graduate by the name of PGT Beauregard, fired on the Federal garrison there under the command of Union Major Robert Anderson. Anderson had been Beauregard's artillery instructor at West Point. Thus, the war began by the firing of one student on his own teacher. What did men like Anderson and Beauregard learn at these military schools? And we'll take West Point here as our example because it's really the model for the other schools in the country. First of all, the cadets were appointed by Congress, much like they are today. They needed to pass basic physical requirements and educational requirements. Then a cadet would report to West Point in the summertime, where he would camp out and learn military drill. The academic year commenced in the fall, and the program was generally four years long. So in this four-year program, a cadet would start his fourth year as a plebe, his third year as a sophomore student, his second year as a junior student, and his first year as a senior student. During the fourth year, or a cadet's plebe or first year at the military academy, he would study only two subjects, French and mathematics. You've got to understand here, the curriculum was very much geared toward engineering and science, since these officers, after their graduation, were expected to go on to build roads, canals, military fortifications, lighthouses, and other types of projects. During a cadet's third class year, or sophomore year, drawing would be added to the curriculum. During a cadet's second class year, or junior year, he would then study chemistry and philosophy. And during a cadet's first class year, or senior year, he would study moral and political science, he would study rhetoric, and ironically, only one semester of his entire four-year career at West Point would a cadet be exposed to military engineering and the science of war. Outside the classroom, Cadets were also given instruction in infantry, cavalry, and artillery drill, as well as the use of the sword through fencing lessons. Cadets were not only graded on all of these, but also on their conduct. On graduation day, the cadets with the best overall records were commissioned as second lieutenants in the engineers and in the artillery. Cadets with the lower scores were commissioned into the infantry. The impact of a military education like that offered at West Point on the overall conduct of the American Civil War has long been debated by scholars. There's no denying that having a military education like that at West Point was a true asset to officers on both sides of the American Civil War when it came to equipping, training, discipline, and organizing armies in the war.